Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video we will finally make our network request and get the response of the breaking news and display that in our recycler view. So our architecture will be that we have that news repository. So if you don't know MVVM that well, we have that news repository. The purpose of the repository is to get the data from our database and our remote data source, so from retrofit, from our API. So in this news repository, we will have a function that directly queries our API for the breaking news. And in our news view model, we have that instance of our news repository. So from within the, the view model, we will call the functions from our news repository. And here we'll also handle the responses of our requests. And then we will have live data objects that will notify all of our fragments about changes regarding these requests. And if you're not familiar with all these terms, then don't worry, it will get clear when we actually implement it. So first of all, we can go into our news repository and write a function to get the breaking news from our API. And because the network function is a, is a suspend function, we also need to make this function a suspend function, which will be called get breaking news. This will take the country code, which is a string, and the page number, which is an integer. And that function will just call from our retrofit instance, our API, get breaking news and pass the country code and the page number here. And then we can go into our news view model. And here I will create a live data object, which I will call val breaking news. That is a mutable live data of type resource, so our wrapper class that we defined in the last video, of type news response. And import resource here. And I'll set that to a new mutable live data. And I hope you remember that we created that resource class and the purpose of that, so I will quickly open that up. That is used to, as, as a wrapper class, for our generic type, type T here, which is our network response. So that is in our case, our news response. And depending on which state we emit here, so either success, error or loading, we can handle that different in our fragment. But just wait until I implement the function, then it will get clear, I promise. First of all, we need two more variables here. One for our breaking news page, because we will manage the pagination in this view model later on, because if we would do that in the fragment, the current page number would always reset if we rotate the device and the view model doesn't get destroyed when we rotate it. So I will just initially set this breaking news page to one, but later on we will implement some logic that will actually paginate our responses. And now we can implement our function that executes our API call from the repository. So a function get breaking news that only takes a country code, which is a string, because we don't need the page number parameter here, because we already have that breaking news page declared in our view model, and that will be the, the place where we handle that. So in this case, we are fine with a single parameter. And now, because inside of our repository, you can see that this is a suspend function, that means that we have to call this function from another suspend function or from within a coroutine. And we don't want to make this a suspend function because then we would just propagate that function to our fragment and then, then we would need to start the coroutine in the fragment and we don't want that. So what we need to do is we need to start a coroutine in this function. And in the view model, the best way to do that is with the view model scope. So let's write view model scope dot launch. So if you don't know that, the view model scope will make sure that this coroutine is, stays only alive as long as our view model is alive. And that is something you should always use in your new view model, in your general view model, of course. And what we want to do in this function, before we make the actual network call, we want to emit the loading state to our live data because we now know that we are about to make the network call. So we should emit that loading state so our fragment can handle that. And that is very easy to do. Just use our breaking news live data and post a new value in this, which is resource.loading. 
And now we can make our actual response. So we write val response, that is the variable we will save the response in. Then we call our news repository and get our breaking news. Pass our country code and our breaking news page. So on this line, all the magic happens. Here we make our network response. This is a suspend function. You can see that on that little arrow here. And when that function is finished, the coroutine will just continue with the next line. And here we can be sure that the current network response is saved in that response object. So in this case, we can handle our response. And for that, I want to create a separate function in which we will later also handle the pagination. But for now, I will just create a function. Um, let's make it a private function, actually. Private function handle breaking news response. Response. And that takes a response of type response and news response. And we need to import response here from Wetrefit, of course. And this function will return a resource of type news response. So in this handle breaking news response function, we will now decide whether we want to emit the success state in our breaking news live data or the error state. And for now, this function will be very easy. We will just check if our response is successful. Then we need to check if the body of our response is not equal to null, which it is not when it is successful. And if it is not null, then we want to return a new resource dot success and I'll actually give this a name result response and pass our result response here. And in all other cases, if the response is not successful, we want to return resource dot error and pass our response dot message. So I don't think that is anything I need to explain. We just check if our response is successful. If it is, we return the, the success state. If it's not, the error state. And now we can call our breaking news live data and post a new value. And here we pass our handle breaking news response. And we need to pass our response that we got from our retrofit. And if you now don't know what this live data object here is, that is just used for our fragments, so our fragments can subscribe to that live data as observers. And whenever we post changes to that live data, like here we post the loading state, or here we post the response success or error state, then our fragments will automatically get notified about that change. And that is very useful when we later on rotate our device, then we immediately get the current up-to-date data from our view model. Then we can go into our breaking news fragment. And here I will create a latent var for our news adapter, for the recycler view adapter. That is a news adapter, of course. Then I will quickly write a function to set up our recycler view. Private function set up recycler view. That function will set our news adapter to a new news adapter. And then we will call rv breaking news dot apply and set the adapter of that recycler view to our news adapter and we want to set the layout manager layout manager to a new linear layout manager and pass activity here and then simply call that function in on view created and now we can use our view model here to call our breaking news live data and call observe on that. So we basically subscribe to all the changes regarding that live data. So whenever we get new breaking news, then this observer will be called and we can handle that new response in our fragment and update our recycler view. So as, an, as a lifecycle owner in a fragment, we always need to pass the view lifecycle owner. And as a second parameter, we pass a new observer here. And here you can see the parameter of that ob observer is our resource of type news response. So I will give this a name, response. And depending on what, uh, what state that response is, we want to handle that differently. So when response is resource.success, we need to import resource, 
resource.success, in that case, we want to hide our progress bar, which is a function that I will create right now. Below here, private function hide progress bar. And that will just take our pagination progress bar from our breaking news fragment and call dot visibility and set it to view dot invisible. Then we can copy that function and make the same for showing the progress bar show progress bar and set the visibility of that to visible of course. Then we can go back up here. So the first thing that happens when we go to the success response is we want to hide our progress bar because then we are not in the loading state anymore. And then we can call our response dot data dot let. So we check if the data is not equal to null. And in that case, we can give this a name news response. And here we just want to set our news adapter dot differ dot submit list and pass our news response dot articles. Then if our resource is a resource dot error, in that case, we want to hide our progress by two because we're not loading anymore. Then we want to take our response dot message and make that null check. And I will give this a name message. And in here, we just want to log an error, tag, um, import, not tag here, want to import log, oh, come on, like this, and I will create a tag up here, val tag is equal to breaking news fragment. And then we can just write an error occurred and pass our message. And in case it is a loading resource, so is resource dot loading, then we simply want to show our progress bar. And what we also need to do is we need to go back into our news view model and actually call our get breaking news function, of course, because right now we are not even making the network request, so nothing will happen. And I will call this in the init block of our news view model. So just call get breaking news here and I will pass us as a country code but you can choose your country, of course. You can find all the country codes that are available on the newsapi.org website. And to make that network call actually work, we also need to add the internet permission, of course, in our manifest. So let's open that up and add a user's permission internet here. And if we now run our app and try it out, then you see it is stopping. And if we take a look in Lockcat, we get a little error. This socket failed EPERM. If you get that error, then that is not a really bad error. You can solve this error simply by uninstalling that app from your emulator and reinstalling it if you have started it before. So in case you've done that, then we can really try it out. Try out if our app is working. It's loading. And there we go. Here are our breaking news and currently the pagination is not working. We only have that single page, but we can get our news. We can display them in our recycler view. Those two news just don't have an image here. So that is not something that has to do with Glide because for those other news, it's working. So yeah, and also if we rotate our device, we immediately get the data from our live data. So it's working perfectly fine. So I hope this video helped you to understand everything we did here. If so, please leave a like and comment below. And also if there's anything I can improve on, please let me know in the comments. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.